I was born in Broadlawn General Hospital in Des Moines, Iowa. My parents came from uh, El Dorado, Arkansas. They both came from the same community and moved here. My dad in 1920, my mother came later. My father came here seeking employment and he heard about the strike here in uh, Des Moines, Iowa and came here as a scab worker on the Rock Island Railroad. My dad was a good singer, good. I used to go to public places where he'd be singing and I'd let everybody know that was my daddy. <laughs> he was barbecue, best barbecue in the world. His Blue Jay's Barbecue. That was his show name, Blue Jay. He was noted for his barbecue. And our house was just noted for people to come by and eat. It was more community-like because nobody had anything. So they were used to putting their, anything they had together and everybody eating together, especially on 10th Street here in West Des Moines. My community involvement really began as a child watching my parents perform. They took care of people, they fed people, they shared what they had, and that they weren't the only ones. Everybody on the block or in the neighborhood would share with one another. In the late 60s, I became uh, tied up to OEO, uh, Office of Economic Opportunity, and as a volunteer, I volunteered and then I was hired as a secretary of the Opportunity Center and went on from there to be the director. The first Opportunity Center was located at 8th and Railroad. Later years, Evelyn, um, Evans Lumber Cabinet Company needed more space, so we moved from 8th Street and Railroad to 621 Walnut, old telephone building. There was a house on the uh, elementary school playground. They allowed us to use that for a daycare for some of our summer programs. And we had uh, children from ages maybe three on up. Wherever I see them at now, they're grown. I don't recognize half of them, but they remember me. <laughs> they remember me and they still remember working at the center. We're center kids, they call ourselves, you know. It all started back in, I can't remember the year it started, but the comprehensive plan for West Des Moines was presented, and they made a mistake when they invited the, na <laughs> the neighborhood representative, myself, to the meeting. And I noticed that they had no plans for this area, you know, for one, uh, the 100 block, all the way from 1st to 14th. It's one of the reasons why we wanted to name the street after John Long because he got real active at that time. He had a big handshake with the mayor, Mayor Mills, that the planning has jumped over our area and started at 14th and went on to 19th. And he promised that he would work with uh, the community to do for Valley Junction and the community began to work on improvements and that, that's where it started at. Uh, Paul Birch saw the building, and we checked in with Mr. DePhillips, purchased the building. Some people said that we were losing our mind because it was an old warehouse and all beat up, but thanks be to God, it was a God plan because if it looked hopeless. It looked hopeless. But gradually, my husband and my son-in-law and family members and friends, everybody chipped in. People started donating stuff to us, and we remodeled that building and continued the work. Now it's a one-stop shop. Right now you've got uh, your medical clinic, free medical clinic, you got free legal advice, you got a uh, church, you got free food, free clothing. Five days a week we serve lunch. Two evenings per week we serve an evening meal. And that's done with the churches, of, of Church Opportunity Group, again. My husband's energy and involvement in the community was a surprise to me because quietly he did so many things that we didn't even know about until, you know, they surfaced after his death. His energy was just, I don't know, unspeakable. I find people come, coming to me saying, what am I going to do without him? My goodness, what am I going to do without him? But, you know, I'd be consoling people, don't have time to cry my own self for him. But he was quite a man, taught us how to live, ended up teaching us how to die. Yes, he did. The church was very, played a very important part in both 
uh, the church being built on 9th Street and also the existing Eddie Davis Community Center, which houses the church within it. My son happens to be the uh, pastor of that church. And <laughs> even him not realizing that he was anointed and chosen to do this, uh, he thought that, we, you know, something missing. They're looking at this building. Mel Harper from Harper Limited, he retired from his construction company. He got all his friends together, retired the debt, $318,000 building, and in a year and a half he had it paid for. He said, well, here you are, you got a building. They can't put you out. Might turn your lights off, but they can't put you out of the building. Namesake Pastor Emeritus uh, Davis, Eddie Davis, he always did in West Des Moines, Valley Junction area, pass out food, knock on people's door and pray for them. And that's why we named the center after him. And his wife, was, which is my husband's mother, May E. Davis, was named after the clinic. And it was because of what they did. It was because he was such a caring, giving type person. And it didn't bother him, it didn't seem to break him down at all when he had to leave the church on 9th Street. He just continued doing what he was doing. He did it out of his car and wherever we had the place that he could put stuff. And that's why we named the center after, after Eddie. Valley Junction is special. Special because it's still community. Uh, when the city manager first came to West Des Moines, uh, Jeff Pomerantz, he said, hold on to this area. When something happens in Valley Junction, you've got to a nucleus that people come together and work on their problem. That's what I think about Valley Junction. Special. I wouldn't leave it for nothing. <laughs>